And we are live! Exclamation mark. Yo! <laughs> Let's see, excellent connection. Stream is healthy. Cool. Cool. Okay, so welcome to the second brew with the Lycros beans that we have. That we roasted ourselves and we are trying the osmotic flow technique, which is normally used for a darker roast, but with these light roast beans. So some experimentation is being had and we are just seeing how it holds up to the technique because uh, yet again that technique requires a lot of CO2 buildup and degassing while light roast beans don't really have that much CO2 and buildup as it's uh, aging in its lifetime so that's why we're using the freshest of beans to see if we can recreate it on the osmotic flow and get a good cup of coffee and yesterday we got a pretty decent cup in my opinion it was one day after the roasting uh, time and our recipe was this over here brew ratio of 1 to 13 20 grams of coffee 260 grams of water brewing temperature of 80 degrees celsius pretty rare for a lighter roast brew time whatever it comes out as it comes out as but it was around 2 minutes and 30 seconds Grand size 37. So we're gonna reuse this recipe again and see if we can still get the same cup of coffee, maybe better, maybe worse. And we'll see what the one day difference really makes with this technique and uh, the osmotic flow. So let's begin. Go down over here. So cool. Measure out our beans. Point oh two twenty. Our ground coffee. Cool, cool, cool. We have our coffee filter. We need a cup to brew in and our boiling water. start cooling our water down from boiling to 80 degrees Celsius. Getting 
kind of cool. The kettle is pretty full right now, so I'm going to pour a bit of the liquid out. It's like pretty high up. begin with the pour. Pouring into the center, outwards, for the blue. Pouring 50 grams over here. second mark I pour straight into the center It's actually looking kind of better today. Like the dome shape is a bit more defined. I am also pouring slightly faster to keep up with that dome shape. And now we go into our circles. So, 260. So for some reason this brew was a bit quicker than yesterday's brew. I could feel that the amount of water that I needed to pour in was uh, a faster flow rate than what I needed to pour yesterday to keep that dough shape going. So I don't know what that is all about. Probably the beans are now less degassed and it's allowing the liquid to just flow through a bit easier is my guess. Look in the part. Let's see how it tastes. So this one finished at around two minutes and like 15 seconds. There we have it, our cup of coffee. Like, one thing that I've realized with the lighter roasts here is that it's 
probably not a better cup of coffee than what I would have at a higher ratio where it's a bit more clarity. Like the body doesn't really help it that much. Yo, what's up? Let me know what you ended up uh, finding yesterday with your hand grinder recommendation journey and research. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's like this type of more thicker, viscous body with the lower brewing ratio is not really helping the, uh, the lighter roasts as much as it does the darker roasts, which is kind of a shame. I was hoping that it would uh, be like a totally different cup, but it, like it is a different cup, but it's not as good as probably what I would expect this type of bean to do at a higher ratio where it's a bit more of a cleaner lighter body and a bit more emphasis on the tasting notes instead of that viscosity that you're getting from the lower brew ratio so right now the the body and the thickness is kind of overshadowing the tastes that I would want to have from these beans because I'm pretty confident that these Ethiopian Sadamba beans will have a lot of interesting tasting notes to uh, showcase if they are given the platform or proper liquid to do so. Like this one's a bit too tight right now, so I'm gonna add a dash of water and see what happens. And I don't think this experiment has been a failure. I actually think we started off too late, meaning one day after the roast is already too late to try the osmotic flow. Next time, I should uh, roast the beans and wait like an hour after and then use the osmotic flow technique with the lighter roast. So the next time I'm roasting some beans and I'm doing it at a light to medium roast, then I'm totally going to brew a cup of coffee right after with the osmotic flow with those beans and see if I can uh, uh, get some new insights when I do that. I, this is much better in my opinion with the dash of water. It's given the liquid a bit more breathing room it's a bit more silkier too for the mouth and it makes way more sense with the tastes that I'm getting so it's not just so focused on the thickness and viscosity and juiciness of the liquid it's more about the tasting notes and the silky body instead so it's coating my mouth a bit differently too Seems like Japanese people usually roast at home and brew their coffee freshly roasted. <laughs> Funnily enough, YouTube was asking me if I wanted to hold this comment because I think Japanese people and roast is like maybe something that the, the YouTube algorithm uh, have uh, flagged as something that might be offensive. So that was kind of funny actually. <laughs> but yes. They do usually have their own roasting setup and they use very fresh beans, but they also always go for a darker roast. And I really want to see if we can play around with this technique with a lighter roast. <laughs> <I know. laughs> What's up, Andre? How's it going? I should like get to like read this, like, get the pronunciation properly. Shokalaika. Is that correct? Shokalaika. Reminds me of chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> But 
I must say that this cup of coffee right now that I'm having is delicious with a dash of water. It's silky smooth. It doesn't have any over-extracted drynesses, so there is no raspy tongue effect in my mouth after sipping it right now. And there is no harsh acidities going on. It's an extremely pleasing cup of coffee. And having that dash of water remove it from its thicker, more viscous tastes into more of a balanced and pleasing cup of coffee is probably what is uh, really working with this, this bean right now and this brew type, which is the osmotic flow technique and the uh, variables that I'm using. So this is probably the best that the cup will be, in my opinion. I don't see it getting better tomorrow. And uh, yeah. Sasha, that's much easier, much easier. What's my name? Paul. My name is Paul. Greetings. Cheers. Nice to meet you. Andre, Sasha, and Paul. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Yeah, I love being on first name basis with people. Like, this is usually what I do at a cafe, too. After a couple of interactions back and forth and just getting to know a customer, to really reel them in and have like a, a solid chat with them, you need to start off with that first name basis and uh, they'll be a customer for life, you know? It'll just be like a good chat back and forth every single time they come into your store and you serve them coffee. So yeah, first name basis is very important. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is probably, I would say, somewhat of the success of a experiment and I don't think yet again we went far enough into the variables as in the time after roasting to really test it out so yet again next time I'm gonna try to roast the beans and brew with them like an hour after and maybe like five hours after and then ten hours after and see if I can get an even better cup that usually is not possible with a lighter roast so quickly after the roast uh, duration with the osmotic flow. Nice. Yeah, good luck with the uh, barista applications. I actually have a video coming up just for you then. It's going to uh, ask and uh, share a lot of basic, intermediate, and expert skills and things that you need to know to be a barista because I'm gonna pick the brains of a lot of my barista friends and combine that with my own barista knowledge and just try to have a uh, really good understanding of everything that is required to be a really good barista and it does take a lot of time and effort but it's super rewarding like I I did it for many years part-time and it's just extremely satisfying of a uh, career and you really get to meet a lot of people you get to learn a new craft you get to struggle together in the trenches behind the bar you get to uh, just have a good time and uh, one thing that I would recommend you to do right away is to tamp, so tamping the espresso coffee with both of your hands. Try to become a bit more ambidextrous with the motions that you're doing because it is a job that uh, could cause uh, repetitive stress injuries. So just try to be a bit more ambidextrous with, with things. Uh, let's see. It's hard to find a nice cafe to take me because I want part time. Yeah, especially if you don't have a lot of uh, prior barista knowledge. A lot of cafes usually want that if they are hiring part time. So someone who's like a all star that can just go in and uh, do their thing and clock out, no biggie. But if you're learning the ropes, starting off like really just 
being in there and like soaking in as much knowledge is probably what most cafes want, sadly enough. But uh, yeah, I would yet again say the barista job for me has been amazing. Like I learned a lot, met a lot of cool people, and it's just such a nice social job. And I mostly do graphic design in my life, and that's a very like isolating and uh, stoic job, while the uh, coffee barista job is way more like getting yourself out there, talking to people, interacting, being very like on the ball with motions, and... Uh, optimizing like orders and being able to overlap different drinks at the same time like steeping a tea for a tea latte while pulling a shot over here and knowing what takes the longest so you start that off first so uh yeah mm -hmm. yeah it will be tricky if you've never had a barista job before to land that first barista job but i think as long as you're showing your eagerness to learn and you're willing to uh really just have a good uh positive attitude towards like just being a barista that's in learning and learn everything that they have and be a sponge and uh showcase slightly your like love for coffee and uh then you'll get it like that's how I got into I, I didn't have any barista knowledge but I had barista passion that coffee passion and a lot of cafes usually want that blank slate where you can be trained up by their ways and methods so a lot of the times unless you're like a superstar barista they actually want a clean slate to fully train you on their techniques and methods because every cafe is different and unless you're that top-end barista that can easily adapt to a lot of different scenarios, it's a lot of times better to just hire someone with a flesh, fresh, clean slate to uh, then train up and get good at their systems and methods. Yo, get that job. Get that money. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's that is for sure one of my best years in my opinion like being a barista is a great stepping stone so the biggest issue with uh, being a barista is that it's hard to be a full-time barista it's very taxing on your body the pay doesn't scale that well down the road so it really is just a stepping stone to learn something new to be a bit more social out there and to learn a skill to really just like have a fun part-time job to earn some money and pass some time but if you really want to get further into coffee while being a barista that's like the uh the thing where now they're recommending you to become a roaster or like to take on more responsibilities as a manager or to uh, start opening your cafe, own cafe or something and all of these things go outside of that fun aspect of being a barista so it's really hard to uh, transition into something that is uh, better paying for a better lifestyle and living but still do those fun barista things because I love just being behind the bar and pulling shots and talking to customers that's like the, the dream so down the road you'll see me and like this nook somewhere being like that old Asian grandpa that does like one pour over every five minutes for people you know that'll be my uh, retirement plan <laughs> uh, what is your favorite way to enjoy coffee besides pour overs good question so pour overs is my daily driver I love pour overs the most however if I would have to pick something else Probably, I would like to go out and get like a milk-based drink, like a Cortado. 
something that's just espresso and maybe like two thirds milk or like a cappuccino or something because I know that I can't get that in my coffee setup at home and I really enjoy that experience every now and then so whenever I go out to a cafe that I really like and I know that their espresso beans are on point and their steaming is on point and the barista is pretty decent I like to go for a small milked beverage Yeah, being a roaster would be pretty dope too. Like it's, uh, it will probably be a bit, uh, so I have some roasting friends and it's interesting because you learn a lot of things, but you're also very secluded from that social interaction because you're kind of in the back end just dealing with logistics, like the sourcing of beans. And it's a lot of labor actually moving beans around and just, being like the machine monitor person so it's not as like sciency as you would think like you would like a lab coat and like the safety glasses just like mixing beans back and forth and stuff it's it's less of that in the professional roasting world and more of overseeing and keeping standards to a specific height and making sure that you're hitting the same roast levels as last time to get a consistent product out, you know. <laughs> There's been some that started out at home and ending up turning it into a business. Yeah, actually, there is actually so many home roasters these days that buy a small like roasting machine that can make a couple of kilos and they start off selling it to their friends and they really love it and then they start selling it online and suddenly you have a uh, business out of that so coffee roasting is uh, it can start off from humble apartment beginnings totally and do you know what would be really cool if everyone just uh, roasted their own coffee with their own setup and we did like a roast sharing system in like some kind of a group everyone who's like roasting their own beans can share it with each other and uh that'll be really fun in my opinion kind of like a coffee sharing program but with personal roasted coffee one day one day i'll make all these things happen <laughs> Yeah, so far, I don't think I'm going to brew more with the osmotic flow with these beans because I think that the beans are just right now suitable for a higher brewing ratio. So I'm going to try to maximize these specific beans tomorrow with how I would usually brew with them because I think they're now ideal, like two days after roasting, for a way higher brewing ratio and for a higher uh, extraction brew method. So. Tomorrow we'll still use the Kalita Wave, but we won't use the Osmotic Flow, and we're gonna brew with some higher brewing ratios. So let's look at this. Coffee bean potluck, yes, that'll be fun. It's kind of like a uh, king's cup with alcohol. Everyone has to take a bit of their pot the coffee beans and pour it into like a. Uh, a big vat and then we shake it all together and then we distribute this custom blend to everyone. <laughs> so what did we taste over here? I thought it was really good after a dash of water but it wasn't like ideal or great like amazing or anything it was like somewhere over there. Extraction wise it was still slightly under extracted I think it was very similar to yesterday where after adding that dash of water the slight acidity and sourness that I was experience, experiencing in the cup kind of like dissipated so adding the dash of water and diluting it a bit more really opened it up and that's where we got that taste which was pretty decent.
Yeah. <laughs> I actually have something similar to King's Cup. This is my cold brew mix. So whenever I have just a few beans in a coffee bag, I pour it in over here, and when it's full, like pretty full, like right now, I make cold brew with it. So whenever you have two little uh, beans in your bag for a cup of coffee, just get a jar, put it in, label it cold brew, and make cold brew with it. So this over here will never be replicable down the road because it's all uniquely five grams of beans here and there to uh, then make the cold brew. So it's a nice way to use up those rem remnants of uh, coffee beans you have in your uh, bag. Cold brew. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, it's pretty smart and you get like this fun mini cold brew surprise after uh, a couple of months. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for joining me. It was a lot of fun. And actually, let's just say what we're going to do tomorrow. So we're going to increase some things. So we're going to, let's use the red. Since we're not using the osmotic flow tomorrow, we're going to use a more standard brewing uh, technique for a lighter roast. We're going to go higher in our brewing ratio. We're, we'll do something like 1, 2, let's do 17. And then we'll probably use a bit less coffee. So we'll use something like 15 grams of coffee. And 15 times 17 is, calculator, I have messed up my math on stream once, so now whenever I am stuck with a mathy thing that I don't know, I calculate it. 255 grams. And usually with these techniques, we want higher water temperature, so we'll do 100 degrees Celsius. We'll start off at boiling and see what happens. And with our grind size, this is actually kind of coarse because of the osmotic flow. So we're going to do, let's bring it down to 30 or why not? Test it out there. So this is our recipe for tomorrow. 1 to 17 brewing ratio, 15 grams of coffee, 255 grams of water, boiling water, and a grind size of 34. Okay, so I hope you have a great day. Faye, David, Andre, Sasha, take care. <laughs> these names and take care everyone have a great day see ya